It was almost exactly a year ago that I reviewed the Bly KVM from Blycube, a little PCI Express device that was designed to supplant IPMI using a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. In that time, they've introduced version 4. This is an external device and might have actually answered quite a few of the complaints that I had about the original. But is it actually worth your money? Let's find out. All right, we've got some actionable items from the board, so listen up. We've been working on collaboratively disseminating creative thinking so we can implement multifunctional customized paradigms to revolutionize our compute processes. Now, I have no idea what any of that means, but we need an answer to them by the end of the day. So, suggestions. Uh, what about Vulture? Well, that depends. Does it include corporate buzzwords? Well, Vulture is the world's largest privately owned cloud provider. Yes, the cloud. I love it. They say the cloud is good for synergistically transforming enterprise-wide core competencies. Well, I don't know about all that, but with Vulture, we can instantly roll out high-performance cloud servers with their one-click deployment tool. They have plans for virtualization or bare metal instances, object storage, even GPU compute for AI-accelerated workloads. Hmm. I like what you're saying, but could you translate it into a language that I understand? With Vulture, we can quickly revolutionize our compelling processes with customized virtualization platforms, increasing ROI through cloud-based resources. All right, well, I think that's lunch. With Vulture, you can skip the corporate talk and get right down to business. With 32 data centers around the world, they'll have an instance near you and your customers, whether you need a single VM or a full global rollout. Visit GetVulture.com craft and get a $250 free trial for your first 30 days. Again, that's GetVulture.com craft and a huge thanks to Vulture for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. One of the biggest challenges with running outdated server hardware is the lack of modern remote access features. Even a server that's less than five years old might still rely on Java or some outdated web plugin for access, meaning that remote access is not only difficult, but potentially fraught with security risks as well. That's why if you run a home lab or support hardware for small and medium sized businesses, I really like the idea of replacing baked in IPMI solutions with devices like this. But this is the old version of this product. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Bly KVM4, and it does everything a traditional IPMI port in a server can do, but with some added functionality, modern security, and a lower price tag than most IPMI licenses even are. Before we get started, a huge thanks to Blycube for sending over the Bly KVM V4 for my review. Like all reviews on the channel, no money changed hands. Blycube has no input over the production of this video, nor will they have the opportunity to see it before it goes live on YouTube. Now, like I said in the intro, I took a look at the Blycube Bly KVM V2 about a year ago, which was based on a PCI Express card with a Raspberry Pi compute module on board. You would install the card into a server, then connect all of its various plugs and headers into the PC to allow for full bare metal access. The whole thing ran on the PyKVM open source project and can do things like power on and off the server, remotely access video, emulate a keyboard and mouse for control. You could even emulate storage devices and boot directly from them, allowing you to actually do a complete operating system install without ever physically touching the server that you're working on. Pretty cool stuff. It's a really cool product, but one of the major Achilles heels that I mentioned even back then was the requirement of that Raspberry Pi CM4 to actually drive the thing. When I reviewed this card, CM4s were basically unobtainium, and the only reason I got one was because BlyKVM sent me one with the card. While supply has started to level back out as of late, the BlyKVM still isn't the most affordable solution. There are three custom PCBs on here, including an HDMI video input that utilizes the Pi's camera connection. While it's a neat little package, needing to spend almost $300 or more for a complete setup shouldn't really surprise anyone. But now we get the Bly KVM4, and the first thing you might notice is the external box rather than being a PCI Express device. I actually don't mind this change at all, as the V2 didn't even utilize the PCI Express connector for either power or data, as it doesn't make a lot of sense to draw power from a PCI Express slot if the PCI Express slot is turned off. It makes sense now that you think about it. There are still internal headers that you need to run, but instead of running a PCI Express card and then daisy chaining pigtails off of that, there's this little nice blank PCI Express header with an RJ45 plug on it that daisy chains out via some pigtails to your front I.O. 
that being your power and reset buttons, as well as your activity lights. This external box now houses the brains of the outfit, and the brains have had the most significant rework to bring down the total cost. Gone is the Raspberry Pi CM4, and in comes an Alley Winner H616 powered mini PC. As the Pi KVM software isn't all that taxing to run, most of the CM4's power was just sitting idle, even when you were remotely connecting to it. Running the same software on an Alley Winner H616 drops the price significantly from well north of $300 to get all of the bits and bobs and connectors you need for the V2 to just $155 for the complete package with the V4. There are also some added features that I didn't notice missing in my last review. Moving around to the rear of the Bly KVM, you can see a pair of HDMI ports, one for input and the other to pass through to a display. The V2 didn't have video pass-through, which meant no local console access if you ever needed to work on a machine locally. There are also more power input options here than before, with the V4 supporting a 12-volt barrel connector, 5-volt over a USB-C port, or power over Ethernet through the Gigabit Ethernet port. There's even built-in Wi-Fi now, meaning you don't even need to plug into a network to get the same remote access to a machine. Powering up the Black AVM, you'll be able to get your IP address off of the little OLED screen on the front of the device, which I think is a really handy feature. There's also some basic stats like temperature and CPU utilization displayed on here as well. Logging into the web interface, the overall design is very simple and straightforward, which I really do appreciate. In the top left of the screen, you have status lights for currently available features, like making sure the keyboard and mouse are being properly recognized by the server, along with the current latency for video capture on the Bly KVM itself. Further down the screen are your power commands. These send physical power and reset commands to the front I.O. headers on the server, so long as you have those pigtails connected. There's also a virtual keyboard if you need to send special keys from your remote machine which is very handy as my Mac laptop didn't like sending F11 over the web interface to select a boot device when I was trying to boot into BIOS. But you also won't have every key available if you're remoting in from something like an iPad, so a virtual keyboard is a fantastic feature to have. The main web interface is dominated by the HDMI video capture itself, and it is clear and crisp delivered over MPEG-4 compression. You're not going to be playing games on this, but the video capture is still good for up to resolutions of 4K 30fps or 1080p at 60fps. Plenty for managing remote server installations, installing software, or troubleshooting an issue without standing in front of a server rack. Overall, the KVM works exactly the way you would expect it to. Video is delivered with minimal latency, and both the keyboard and mouse are emulated well enough to be able to manage whatever hardware you're trying to connect to. There is one feature here that did catch me by surprise, and I wish I had the hardware on to test it properly. But Blackcube actually implemented a physical KVM switching mode into the Black KVM, which is a feature that I requested back on the V2. It lets you not only connect to a single remote PC, but pass through a KVM switch and control up to four devices over IP. At the moment, this seems to require Blycube's KVM switcher, and Blycube has a video on their YouTube channel with a four-port HDMI KVM with which they've managed to integrate software control from the Bly KVM to enable four-channel switching. That means you can connect up to four servers to the KVM switch and then access all of them via the Bly KVM over IP. Unfortunately, I can't find any hardware listings on their website or their AliExpress page for the KVM switch itself. But as soon as I get in touch with them, I'm gonna see if I can get one over because that sounds super cool. Now, that being said, if they're listening, I would still like all of this in a single 1U device. You've already got a nice rack mount enclosure here. I wanna see the KVM, either a four port or an eight port, tacked onto the side of this and give us the IP KVM of my dreams. I've been wanting a device like this for so incredibly long for managing remote server stacks. It's something that I used to do quite often and the licensing for IPMI or the IP solutions that existed at the time were thousands upon thousands of dollars. Something like this that we could potentially have for, let's say between three and $400, life-changing for a lot of technicians out there. Now, the one thing I haven't really touched on is the downgrade in CPU horsepower when switching from a Raspberry Pi to something like an Alley Winner H616. Blycube moving away from a Raspberry Pi is going to be seen by some as a negative, but thinking about the problems that Blycube is looking to solve, I'm actually a huge fan of this decision.
When I was an IT director managing both people and projects, I used to warn my people and customers that I worked with about falling into the way we've always done things. When you're faced with the same problem to solve year after year, day after day, it's natural to just use the same solution because it's working, right? Whether it be the devices that you're giving your users, the software that you run, or even the way you approach your daily tasks. With the objective here being build a hardware-based, low-cost remote management system for deployment in small and medium-sized business environments, relying on the availability of Raspberry Pis feels like less of a guarantee today than it did even a couple years ago. Building your own solution means you get full control over your hardware product stack, and you don't have to include features that you don't actually need to make your product successful. What we're left with is a less complicated single board computer, a CPU that is still more than up to the task of running the software that Bly KVM wants to run, all in a package that costs less overall for your target customers. Just because the first three versions of your product needed a Raspberry Pi doesn't mean you have to be stuck in that ecosystem forever. And this is a situation where it feels like both Blycube and their customers are going to come out on top. As always, if you're interested in the BlyKVM V4, make sure to follow the AliExpress affiliate links down in the video description. Those help me out more than you might expect. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on social media at Craft Computing. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider heading on over to craftcomputing.store, picking up one of our pint glasses, including our new Matrix-inspired Nonic pints, and uh, start drinking like a pro. Don't drink this beer, though. This was awful. That's going to do for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone. Beer for today is from Matchless Brewing Company. It is Green Hundreds Fresh Hop Saison. Now, I'm not usually an outward fan of Saisons. Uh, that is a wild yeast brewed beer because they tend to be unpredictable. And I like at least having some idea of the flavor profile behind my beers. If it's a stout, you know kind of what it's gonna be. If you if it's an IPA and it's based on a certain kind of hop, you know kind of what it's gonna be. Saisons are kind of the wild west and uh, there's never any telling what you're actually gonna get. Centennial hops, Pilsner and flaked wheat for grain, Napoleon and friends yeast, descriptors, funky, Fresh and juicy. 5.8%. Oh. Oh. Case in point of why I usually don't like saisons. Oh. I hope that gets better. I don't think it's gonna though. Ooh. We'll get into that. I hate funky as a descriptor in beers because of beers like this. Uh, it's definitely funky, but it's not funky. Oh. It is overly tart and sour. And I mean that not in like the hazy IPA citrusy, ooh, that's got a lot of guava to it. I mean that in like a, I'm questioning why I would want to put this in my mouth again. When I was trying to get the head down on the beer, I sucked in a lot of the foam and the beer itself is less funky than the foam was, uh, but, Something I didn't get from just drinking in a little bit of the foam was there's this weird, like, metallic aftertaste. It tastes like I bit into a piece of rotten fruit and then rinsed my mouth out by sucking on pennies. And that aftertaste hits immediately. So even if you do enjoy the funky, fresh, this ain't fresh, the funky, juicy, but not juice, flavor of this beer. I don't know how anyone can enjoy this beer. That's just matchless. You make good stuff. This is not one of them. 
Ja. 